Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening to you guys. So excited to be back with you. I got some cool stuff we're going to do, which we've never, ever done before. I'm not kidding. This is no joke. It's never been done before. Uh, and I'll get to that in a minute. So, okay, Jared, how about that temperature in Chicago? It's only 14 degrees above zero. Hey, you're lucky, right? Some places it's below zero. Hi, Amy. You're well, you guys, it's all warm wherever you are. I see 18 degrees there, <laughs> 14 degrees. I lived in northern Vermont. It would get 40 below, 20 below. So when we got above anything above zero, felt like you know, springtime. So there's your <laughs> Yvette in London. I bet it's cold there too. So we're going to escape from the cold for a little while and talk about some fun stuff here and talk about your photos. Uh, let's go ahead and get this party started by saying I'm Mark Silver. I'm an author, photographer, and educator here in Carmel, California. And let's talk about our sponsor today is our friends at Bay Photo Lab. These guys really are great. I just want you to know this is, I use them for almost all my printing unless it's a, you know, custom print, I'll go work in a lab. But, you know, for almost everything I use Bay Photo, certainly for these kind of cool things, thin wraps, you can see what that looks like, 20% off. Oh, this is really cool. They have the top of the line drum scans. So if you have some uh, photographs, some negatives, you can get them scanned. You get 20% off. I am, by the way, set to do a show uh, scanning some of my negatives with their drum scanner just to kind of show you the whole beginning, middle, and end. That's on my list. But get your best negatives, send them over to them, <clears throat> and they'll scan them at a super high quality scan. And then acrylic prints, 20% off. And as always, 25% off on your first order. Okay. So jump on over there to Bay Photo when we're done with the show and order some prints. Now, here's what I'm going to do that I've never done before. Normally, I, you know, I, I get a photograph and I tell you the story. Well, I'm shooting, pretty much done, almost done, a whole new version of the AYP course. And the final thing is going out on a shoot and putting all the pieces together at once. You know, the five stages of photography. I want to have you get a visual on how that all fits together. So <clears throat> yesterday we went out and shot early in the morning. Um, I made a shot list. Here it is. This is my shot list. You can't really see it too well. Um, and these were the photographs that I had visualized because where's the where's the cycle start at visualization right so I visualized this one place that I have shot before uh, called Whalers Cove and Jan wanted a you know photograph with a lot of blues in it and I knew I wanted a punctuation point but I didn't know what it would be I mean it's a beautiful setting but without a punctuation point it would be pretty plain and I knew I wanted something so I wrote down over here me I might walk into the frame that wasn't gonna happen just the space of it wasn't workable I could put Jan in the frame I tried that or a bird but I didn't know there was gonna be another punctuation point I mean I could have thought about it but you'll see in the film what that was and then I wrote <clears throat> wrote down three other shots, which I also got. And then at the bottom I wrote wide 18 millimeters. And um, I didn't actually have an 18 millimeter <laughs> lens with me. I borrowed it from John, our cameraman. And uh, <clears throat> that's not all in this, but that's the setting. So this is my little story, very sm small portion of this talking about this shooting this particular image, and here it is. That, see, that gives us the whole cypress tree. Now the light has changed. Ah, there we go. I want that starburst, that's pretty awesome. 
nice, clean, perfect starburst coming through. I mean, I can see it right in the frame here. Wow, that's, that's actually pretty good. Okay, so I had visualized this location and I knew I wanted a punctuation point because I don't have to have a punctuation point in every photograph, but it certainly adds interest. In this case, the starburst is the punctuation point. I wish I could go a little further back here, but I'm limited. And I'm going to get a couple of different versions of this. The light is amazing. One thing I didn't do, I mean, I did really quickly, but when you get to a spot where you're going to photograph, remember what Chase Jarvis said, just look without the camera pressed to your face, because as soon as I pull the camera up, I'm into the camera and I'm into its narrow vision. But stop and take it in because there's information here that you need in order to visualize properly. So the, what I'm seeing is lots of cool things like the reflection off the water, there's kelp there, uh, you know, there's the whole texture of the cliffs on the other side and the trees. And then, of course, I'm most interested in what's going on with this cypress tree and the, the cool starburst. There you have it. You guys, this is never, we've never done this before. Jared hasn't even seen this full clip. And we never have ever done a shoot and pulled something out unedited. None of that was edited. I mean, in terms of there's audio changes that we make and color corrections. And you're, you're seeing the raw, raw, raw version of it. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to kind of get the, you know, the flavor of this is where this course is going. So, and that's the story of that starburst. I wa you know, I did know that I wanted some kind of punctuation point. I just wasn't sure what it was, and it presented itself very nicely because it was more early morning light. And uh, yes, this point that d don't don't just go out and immediately put a camera to your face. Look it over. Look around. Take a deep breath. You know, see and observe the environment because. You'll see something different, I guarantee you. And also that's that that's where you just allow your vision, right, to form. What do I really want out of this? Because it's all guided by visualization. The every every step of the cycle of photography, the five steps, it we have visualization at the center. It's all guided by that. So you know, let it develop. That that doesn't just necessarily come in a split second. It might, it could, but you know, sometimes you 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 look over the scene and you start getting ideas. Hope that helps you guys. That course is coming out really soon. And um, by the way, we're going to have President's Day sale here in America. We celebrate two things on the same weekend. One is Valentine's Day, and the other is our president, past presidents, way past, long ago presidents. Uh, I think it's Lincoln and... And George Washington. George Washington, you know. Because both their birthdays are in February, and they're like, why celebrate both at uh, different times when we can celebrate them together? Put them all together. And it happens to be Valentine's Day weekend all at once. So we're giving a 35% discount this weekend, you guys. So you could, you could even buy this course as it stands, but it's going to get replaced with the new course. You get them both. What a deal. Okay. And you could get a membership for AYP Plus, for instance. Uh, uh, Annual is already, you'll already see that we have a discount in there, but you can get a monthly discount for 35% off. Anyway, that's coming your way. So without further ado, let's get well, into Well, before the... that, we should make oh, sure yes. that they all know. <laughs> Thank you. I want you guys to subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss, thank you, Jared, don't miss any episodes because if you don't have the bell enabled, you could miss them. And if you don't subscribe, you're just going to miss out on a whole lot of cool stuff. All right, so here we go. Let's dive into your photos. Let's talk about them.
Who's and this? before we dive into Chicagoland Jared's photo showing cold Chicago, um, I just want to point out that if you want to get your photos on here, because we're going to give someone a free month of AYP Plus. Mm. So if you want to have a chance for that, you need to join uh, AYP Club and submit your photos. I do keep an eye on it during the show, so it's not too late. Uh, I just put the link in the description. So be sure to submit your photos, and we'll be doing that at the end of the show. So stick around. Absolutely. All okay, right. Chicagoland. All right. Yeah, so, so just to, uh, here's the captions for it. Yeah. Uh, just a few brave souls outside in 10 uh, degrees Fahrenheit air temperature, but feels like negative 10. Uh, me being one of them for just a little while. Just got my shot of the day. Manual focus, vintage lens, uh, with a forty-four. It was a forty, uh, forty millimeter lens, uh, f one point eight with a polarizing filter. F one point eight, really? That's rather surprising because there's a lot of stuff in focus here. Um, I think that's the lens. I don't believe that's. Uh, yes, doesn't the lens. That's the lens itself, not what it said. Okay. Yes, correct. That the lens was at that. Yeah. Okay. I love the you know the whole setting. It's like the slice of life. This is called a slice of life. You know, it's a, it's a day in or a moment in your in your town here, and the uh, the clouds and the the uh, snow, a lot of white. Um, and then you know, there's this guy kind of. Walking across the street, his legs, you, you, did the, you did that where you waited to press the shutter so you've got space between, their, between his legs. That's always helpful to show the, the motion. And this flag at half mast. So it's a very, you know, it's a very cool like moment of time. And I love the browns from the building and the tan and offset by... The blue, we've even got a, an S curve, kind of a partial S curve with the road. So you got a lot of compositional elements going on. Blue sky, you know, blue, or rather color, is a compositional element when you have a lot of strong color. And that's very, you know, it's a very strong blue. So that helps your image as well. So good work. Yep, yeah, and he pointed out uh, yeah, on the camera F8, itself, it F8. was like F8. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, I, I I knew that because there's no way you could get that at 1.8. Okay, cool. That yeah. makes sense. All right. Uh, let's take a look at... This is one of Amy, uh, Amy. Amy's self-portraits. Uh, in fact, the caption with it is another self-portrait. Wow, that's scary, Amy. Uh, <laughs> really, Pretty wild rim lighting on your eye and the you know, what it's doing with your teeth. And I was delighted to see that you have made a blurb book and you're going to send me a copy. Thank you. I will definitely, uh, you know, look forward to seeing that. And uh, I'm so happy to see you making a book. So that's great. And we'll uh, show it to Dan and get his feedback too. But anyway, um, Amy, you're doing a great job on your collection of, of self-portraits. We don't call them selfies. That term didn't, didn't really arrive on the scene until, I don't know, what, 10 years ago, maybe? Yeah, Self about that. I about remember 10. listening to a podcast when I was in high school, and they were talking about this new term, selfie. Selfie. We call them self-portraits, which is a much more dignified. Selfie is kind of that you know, quick thing you do with your iPhone or smartphone. And a self-portrait is a very definite part of photography. Almost every photographer at one time or another has taken more than one self-portraits, including myself. And that's a definite part of your, you know, your, your toolkit as a photographer. So anyway, it's always fun to see the latest iteration. The eye is just mind-blowing. It reminds me of Chucky. A little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a chucky look, you know, but I get I get that you're being playful about it, so that's cool. Good one. And All the edges right. there, edges of the frame. Looks like you processed that in. 
Silver Effects Pro and left the frame edge, which is another bonus there. Good one. Here's something that's uh, very much different, but definitely want to uh, bring it up. So AYP Plus, one of the assignments that we had was to teach someone visualization. That's and right. Yvette uh, works at a, a care home. So they took their Nikon camera with them and uh, taught some of the residents a little bit about visualizations. So first photos ever taken a 89 year old lady and a 94 year old or eight yeah 89 year old lady and 94 year old lady so now very this first is bob, photos. right who who, who did uh, that yeah though? bob uh yeah who that's their screen name for yvette so oh i didn't know that okay yep. so uh these All are this the photos time that. that's brilliant i'm so thrilled to hear that so I want to hear more of that story. That's incredible. You taught them about visualization, and then they captured, they visualized this flower in the book. Brilliant. Yes, that was our assignment. By the way, one of the things I wrote about in AYP is the best way to learn is to teach. It really is. You know, you have to clarify it in your own mind. So I'm giving everybody an assignment when we learn stuff to teach it to somebody else. And it really helps clarify whether you've got holes in your learning. You know, you have you when you get prepared to teach somebody, oftentimes I've had to stop and do my own research because I know something kind of instinctively. But you know the difference between you kind of know it and you got to present it to somebody else and make sure they really get it. Well done. Bravo. I love yeah. seeing that. That's great. Okay. Thanks for including uh, here's that. one. This is from Jeremy Lindfield, our photojournalist friend. Uh, and he went to uh, Griffith Observatory, which I anyone from well. L.A. area or been to L.A. knows that. Uh, and he took a bunch of photos as the sun was coming up. And so this is one of the photos that he took. That's That's a wonderful image. I know that spot so well. I hike there. Uh, I have kids in L.A. and we go hiking there. It's a beautiful uh, spot and the p whole park is pretty amazing, you know, considering it's right in the middle of L.A. Uh, that's just, you know, you hit it. You got the uh, speck of light up there. Now, what are we looking at in terms of the speck of light? I'm not sure. I think moon? it might be the moon. That yeah, That's kind of my guess. Big, a little too big for a star. So it's got to be the moon, just a little sliver of the moon. But I the love the whole... coming up too. Yeah, that's really cool. Just the bright, you know, the horizon. <clears throat> but the sky is still dark. We're, we're in the blue hour there. And um, <clears throat> moving into the golden. It's just the golden hour, trans the blue hour transitioning to the golden hour. And I love the reflection on the you know, on the pathway and the diagonal line going there. It's just really great, great image. Brings back a lot of memories for me. But even without knowing where it is, it's it's just, you know, it's a very interesting image. So good job there. Um, going back quick to Yvette's photo uh, with her uh, care residents, um, she also made a book of their photos ah, very so cool. they have a, a book so once again wow. another thing. bonus points you have hit yeah. all the checked all the boxes teaching someone make a book you know getting visualization out to the world you know by the way the more every day i look at how important visualization is to the entire process everything revolves around that and i don't mean just in your photography i mean in life you can take a problem, for instance, and you can visualize how you want to resolve it before you do anything. Before you even do one thing, you say, now, how do I want this to come out? What do I want to do with this? You know, and, you know, if you do it randomly, just like photographing randomly, you're going to end up with random results. Maybe it'll turn out good, maybe it won't. But if you, if you consciously visualize you're going to you stand so much better chance of having it turn out the way you intended it. 
just remember All right. that. So this is one from Chad Tobin. No caption with it. Immediately love it. You know, there's a lot of things to love about this photograph. The, it's really just superb. Okay. There's so many things I love about it because I love frames within frames. I love the shadow of the cowboy, the bright sun that's making that intense shadow, very sharp shadow, the horse, the cowboy. And we, you know, we see very little of the horse other than its rear. Um, and we don't really even see that cowboy. I think he's doing some shoeing there maybe where we're kind of a, I can't quite see but it, it has that feel and then this other cow girl I believe cow person here in the in the right side it's just all around awesome awesome photograph <laughs> taking advantage of the light you know you really had to look at the light and that's super well done on seeing the light and seeing the opportunity for that shadow, which is really interesting. And of course it has punctuation in it. It has a gesture and it's like several, but the main one is the horse and the, and the cowboy. And the cowgirl is walking, you know, her knees are bent, so she's in motion. Yep, you're checking all the boxes there. Well done. I love seeing your work, you guys. And I love the, the colors are awesome too. You know, the tonality, morning sunlight is what that looks like to me. And hitting that white wall is what, what's making it really intense. The shadow really pops out because of that. So that there's an excellent image. All right. Here's one from Eric. And uh, I believe Eric had shown us another still life that he'd done. That was the wine bottle. I think that was... I believe that was Eric last week, and so now we've got another still life. Cameras are always interesting to photograph, especially older ones like this Canon here. It's a you know it's a film camera, it's a rangefinder camera. It's you know we call it a vintage camera at this point. Um, and then we have a tomato or an apple. I'm going to go with apple. Doesn't really matter. Black and white. Um, okay, so I'm not quite, I mean, I get what you're doing. I just don't quite see, it doesn't quite totally fit together for me. And, um, you know, I, you're telling a story, but I'm not, I'm not quite connecting these, the dots here. So between the camera and the out of focus Apple. So, you know, I just feel like you know here's the thing there should be a clear message or what what is it we're trying to say here what's you know photography a photograph is a communication tool so you you, you want to make sure you you're clearly communicating what it is so i don't quite see it though i like where you're going and i like the fact you're doing a still life but i feel like um maybe the camera by itself is enough you know, if I take the, yeah, if I take the apple out, the camera with with the sh strap to me is enough. I mean that that tells a little story. So the either somehow connect the dots between the camera and the apple, or get rid of the apple. I would just get rid of it because I don't feel like even if I just cropped it. I mean it's kind of nice to have the. The curve of the uh, shoulder strap but you see what I mean kind of like you got two sentences like we we're saying hey look at the camera look at the Apple now we have to connect those sentences to make it make sense look at the camera that I'm shooting with this look at the Apple I just shot with this camera but how would you do that well there'd be some way you could Tie the, I'm just suggesting, you know, but let's tie those two concepts together. Because if you think about it in words, it, maybe it makes it easier to kind of see how you're expressing yourself with, with a sentence. And you got another sentence. Do they tie together? 
that's that's all I'm saying there. So you know, see how that goes. Looks like Eric was going for the idea of still life in reverse. He put that in the chat okay. uh, over here. So, yeah. um, so yeah, yeah. I get I get where you're going. You keep working it. Your still lives you can shoot any day of the week. So try it out and see see if you can make those two concepts connect a little bit more. And you don't have to go out into the cold. Don't have to go out in the cold. They're right there. They're probably sitting right there on your countertop or desk or wherever that was taken table yeah but good work well let's stick with the theme of photographing uh fruit we've got this one here um uh -huh. wow from abdul uh, razak uh, i hope i pronounced your name right um but yeah this here's his photo yeah i mean that's cool you've got We've got a still life against this background of, of a very cold winter here. And, uh, you know, there's contrast, which is a big compositional element. Contrast in both the fact, well, in several ways. So you've got contrast of the apple itself as contrasted to this, you know, background of uh, environment. The color is a big contrast between the white and it's sharp and the rest of it's out of focus. So it works well, you know, contrast is a very powerful composition tool. And, um, you know, the message to me is very clear. It's like, here's this crisp apple. It doesn't have anything to do with winter because apples don't grow in the winter in that kind of environment. Maybe in California they do. Actually, apple season's gone. They would all be off the tree by now. But, um, yeah, a big contrast between the crispy, wonderful apple and the cold, harsh environment. So that works. Yeah, you re you really use the the element of composition contrast very well. Good job. All right. Uh, here's one from our good friend Sandy, who is in the comments. Glad that you could join us live today. Sandy. Uh, love seeing your work. Sandy, you're a pro. I mean, what can I say? This is just another awesome image. 2020, 2021. You know, we've got this, the leading lines, the clear-cut subject framed by the tree. And then, yeah, so that's a very... And again, frame within frames. You could have even ended it there, but it's a much more interesting image by having the leading lines go off to the other people who are very small. That's, you know, um, and it, it's just another part of the frame because the main subject is right in the foreground, very easy for us to identify. And then the buildings in the far background and the sun going down might be coming up. And there's all that haze mist kind of off you know behind that it's a, just a wonderful image all around texture on the bricks it's, it's got a lot of you got all sorts of things working there together and that was that was a brilliant image fantastic sandy sandy we got to work together on our plan the thing we visualized was to help uh, bring ayp to uh your country we got to get back on that and um because there's so many talented photographers in your country, I would love to connect with them and, and bring them into our community. So let's let's email each other and get that project rolling again. And Bob Holmes would love that as well. Sunrise, because Bob loves shooting in India. So I think right. that would be a wonderful addition. This one here, this is from John. Uh, let me pull up the caption with this one. As in Johnny uh, well, Concrete? <laughs> no, no, different John. Uh, different John. Uh, okay. This is John uh, ben, Bengono. Uh, okay. I think I got that right. But while shelter in place during the pandemic, I've been photographing whatever I can find in and around the house. One experiment I've been working on is using Photoshop to replicate combining uh, either... Uh, pal paladinum or platinum oh, uh, oh palladium. So like platinum palladium or uh, platinum tones 
with uh, cyan cyan o, o type tones. Wow. Well, uh, this has led cool. to some interesting results. Yeah. Okay. That identifies what you're going for here. You got the kind of the old scratchy plate uh, thing going on. It works really well. I mean, it's I'm sure way more interesting than just the fact that you photograph some flowers. It has that you know intriguing bunch of lines and patterns and textures that are obviously not in the the original image itself so that worked really well i think that's an interesting still life and um you know you you're experimenting with with processing that that actually worked out really well so good good job good one john all right. Uh, here's one from Robin Mitchell. We have returned back to the mountains with uh -huh. Robin. Let me move my picture out of the way so we can see that better. Okay, cool. Light, you know, this, this outcropping is backlit. The sun is behind it there, and that's pretty cool. And, the, you know, the blue in the sky. And you have your little punctuation point. We're right there. You know, as I said in my little video, you don't have to have every single time a punctuation point. However, it's a really useful tool. And it does make all the difference in many cases between a sort of an ordinary and something that pops. And this this really helps that little because it's also it's it's the, again the contrast between the big outcrop you know, in our foreground, the big outcropping and the one behind it even. And then the smallness of that uh, tree, which isn't probably that small, but compared, you know, it's maybe five feet high or something. But compared to the big outcropping, it's, it looks very tiny. And it just, you know, I love the glow around the edges because of the backlighting and the, you know, the interesting texture that's going on there um and the uh you know the blue in the sky so good one excellent yeah that lonely tree it's just got there's something about it and the fact that it it's got the direct light on it really works well i mean that is it's like lit up with its own little spotlight and the and the stone outcropping just behind it is very orange bright orange because of the light so you know that worked really well good one all right uh here is a photo from saba and the caption along with this one is an old woman waiting for the bus this was taken in sweden very cool Gothen gothenburg sweden gothenburg very cool you you know you captured an expression there that really says a lot i I'm, I'm not sure what her emotion is but whatever it is it's really there it, it looks like kind of she's holding her face up now somebody's dejected they're going to put their face down and hold it down so it's kind of like i almost get the message of in spite of this hard year that we know we're all having she's still looking up and being hopeful rather than feeling dejected but there's a tiredness and a weariness you know to her also but her eyes are open she's you know she's being strong in spite of everything that's going on that that's the message that i get out of it and the background is interesting it's an interesting juxtaposition between this old face and the young face almost like this is her own own younger self because that you know that woman has very wonderful features and the girl behind her also does it's really cool how you did that i mean because it really does give me that feeling of you know these two faces working together which is tricky because you've got a background there that could be really distracting, but it's not at all. It works very well. So, great.
Great job. Very cool. Uh, Saba says waste level photography. So I'm guessing yeah. he had it, you know, lower. He wasn't holding it up at eye level, which is something we also very much encourage. Yeah, waist level gives you an upward look at the woman, which, um, you know, gives it a, a, her the feeling of more presence from her. And, you know, anytime you move your camera, like we've gone over this in AYP Plus at different angles. If you shoot high and look down, it's going to minimize your subject. If you shoot low looking up, it's going to it's going to strengthen the subject in the frame, which is exactly what you've done there. So that was a great choice. And I'm guessing when you shot at waist level, you maybe pulled out your LED screen. You could let us know. If you're shooting with a camera like one of these back here, you know, that, uh, you know, the Hasselblad or the Roloflex, you, they're made to look down. One of the reasons I love those cameras. But you can do that with your LED screen as well and just pop it out, hold it at waist level, or even lower. That's the other cool thing about it. those screens. You can put them on the ground even and still be looking up or shoot high over your head, see what's going on. It gives you a lot of choices. So I guess I'm right about the LED. Okay, cool. It's a very useful tool. Also, you know what's also good about it, Saba? You know this. It doesn't put this big barrier between you and that subject. And it also breaks this feeling like I'm photographing you, which can, you know, obviously influence the photograph. Like what if she'd looked over you? Oh, I'm going to smile for the camera. It would have completely changed this image. It's like you didn't, you, you, she allowed you to capture her space and you to be in that space without you busting into it and big camera in front of your face, you know, and then breaking the mood because you have a definite mood there. So that's excellent use of your tools there. Yeah, good, good job. Really good job. All right. Uh, here's one. This is from uh, Gary. And uh, this is part of a project he's working on from this past fall my project on life in Northeast Pennsylvania. I see that as a project, you know, uh, as, as part of a series of images. This one really works well. You know, what I love is the frame, the windows and the reflections, all those little f window frames. Those are f frames within frames. And you have, uh, you know, you have multiple frames going on and you have the background so the space between the house and the telephone pole, you've got the smokestacks, the, maybe that's atomic energy plant, kind of looks like it. Um, and that's a frame by itself. You know, that could be a frame, wouldn't really stand alone by itself, but it is a frame for, your, for our eyes. Then we have the house as its own frame, yep. And then we have the trees on the right. Again, not, you know, that wouldn't really stand by itself, but you put them all together and they work, they work together. You know, that's, that's good use of uh, multiple frames. And I love the old tired looking house, the paint that's just so peeled off and the roof that's peeled off. And miraculously, these windows have survived without being broken. Because this house, I'm guessing, is not occupied. With a roof like that and the siding like that, it wouldn't be a great place to live. You'd be getting a lot of opportunity for leaks and whatnot. But the windows are fine and they're shiny even. Like they're not all dirty and it's kind of a miracle. Um, and that adds a lot of interest to me, the reflection in the windows themselves. Good one. And Asaba mentioned she was actually smiling at me just before the photo. Okay, so you, yeah, there you go. So you kept that shutter going. Good for you to, you know, great that she's smiling at you. You made a connection, and then you let her go back to whatever she was thinking about and doing. So that's good photo work. Great. All right, who else have we got? You guys are just 
I love seeing your work. You're doing a great job here. Yeah, uh, this one, this is from Jennifer down in Australia. Um, this is another image from yesterday afternoon by the river, downstream away from the people, a couple of old water pipes crossing the river. They've now been replaced by much larger pipes. The old pipes were decaying from neglect, corrosion, and floods. The perching uh, uh, cormorants are making their own infinitesimal but relentless contribution to this process. Wow. Uh, the image was originally colored, was captured in color, but I decided that this one would work better in black and white. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with you on the black and white. And it's very interesting that, you know, the line of the pipe, there's a mood line here. You know, if you guys have read my book on composition, you know, there's mood lines, which basically there are lines that you can use within your image to help tell a story. And you've got angular mood lines. You know, you've got the angle of the pipe and the angle of the bird's wing, which is pretty cool the way that's mimicking the other line. Do you see that? That's, you know, you 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 took advantage of that. I mean, look at the look at the angle of the bird wing and in the angle of the the pipe, they're just mimicking each other. That's very cool. So, that's a, you know, that's a very intriguing image because of those lines in particular. And the bird beak being open, the wings outstretched, give it a lot more vitality because there's a lot of diagonal lines going on in that wing too. So that's a good one. Good job. Definitely black and white. Works really well. By the way, I want to pause here for a minute and just ask you guys. I'm going to do an informal survey. Um, I don't know. Can we throw a poll in here? I, I don't think in this. Uh, no, platform. not here. Yeah. You guys should just say yeah, Y or N in your comments here. But would you like to see uh, more of me like going out and shooting and talking about my examples of like how these things work? Talk kind of talking you through, you know, here's here's how I shot this image. This is kind of my thought process. This is how it fits in with the AYP book or composition or create or whatever just to give you kind of a mark out shooting experience talking through it. If you think that's interesting, give me a yay. If you don't, give me an a, give me an n. Give me a y <laughs> or an n. I I'd love to hear from you. Okay, we got one yes. That's good. There's another one. Okay, you guys can do that while we're going along. Okay, Sandy says yes with a thumbs up. Oh, a lot of yeses. Okay, People that's like cool. Idea. And I'd love to someday meet up with you guys and take you along. The very first video I ever did. Yay, Amy. Very, very first video that launched my whole video program, career, and everything was called a photo walk. And I went out with a very popular blogger. And he followed me around. And we did exactly what I'm talking about. I had a bunch of stuff I used to teach. I still do. And I just went on a walk with him with a camera, and we videoed it, and it became very popular. And it led me to go, wait a minute, maybe this is what I ought to be doing now. So kind of going back to my whole basic roots. Okay, sounds like you guys are interested in that. That's good to hear. Okay. Thank you. All right. We're, gonna, we're definitely ready to roll out some new stuff in um, our YouTube channel. So that's... In fact, Jared, I think we'll take even this one, which is quite long. It's a couple hours. And whittle it down to maybe a 10-minute version of it for yeah. YouTube. The long, the not. I'm not going to leave two hours up, but it'll be lengthy on our class. It'll be maybe 45 minutes. Because it shows all the different, again, this, all the stages of photography through this video. In, including sharing it later on. Getting a print made and sharing it in different ways. Okay, thank you guys. Good to hear. All right. Informal survey right on the spot. All right. Well, Eric is 50-50. Uh, okay, well, maybe I can win you over on it. Okay. All right. Well, let's take a look at our next photo. This is from Mike Sue, uh, And as you can see, this is a photo on Mount Fuji. This is the first snow on Mount Fuji in January 2020. 
with uh, Ka- uh, Kawaguchi Lake uh, in the Yam- uh, Yamanashi Prefecture. Hope I got that all right. <laughs> I kind of get the idea there. Okay, early yeah. morning light, I'm thinking. Maybe it's late. May I don't know Mount Fuji well enough to know which side we're looking at, but... Um, you know, golden hour, blue hour about to come, or it's already happened. You get all those deep blues right in the blue hour. So that's very interesting. And then, of course, this diagonal line of, I have no idea what these are, like little posts or something. Yeah, Yeah. I'm not sure. Walkway. Anyway, that adds a lot of interest to it. And the shimmering light off the uh, lake. And, of course, just that, wonderful light behind Mount Fuji. Yeah, it's very, you know, it looks like a painting to me, actually. And uh, very, it's a very, very Japanese Zen kind of feel to me, you know, with this lovely curves up and down Mount Fuji, all the way over to the right hand side of the frame. And then the sliver of the lake and the diagonal line, that all works. It really does look like a painting that you've done with your camera. And I mean that in a very positive way. So there you go. And and it goes with, because we've talked a lot about getting different kinds of photos of very distinctive locations. You know, locations exactly. that, you know, like the Taj Mahal or the yeah. Eiffel Tower. Mount Fuji is probably one of the most photographed mountains in the world. Sure. But not a lot of them have those post things. Yeah, exactly. How do you get a non-cliche version of a photograph? So that that worked out really well. Good good job. Eric right. says, I'd buy it. Okay, well, I'm not even going to sell it to you. Oh, the class? Yeah, you can buy that right now. You can pre... You just buy it. You'll get the existing class, and then when the new one comes out, you'll get the new one too. You get two classes out of it. Okay. All right. Uh, this one is from Salim, uh, and the story for this one, this is a shot I took while walking around the bank area in London on a 35 millimeter film using a Canon AE-1. Wow. Very cool. I mean, that's bonus points with film. It's a very interesting piece of geometry, you know, lots of geometry here, and that's all, all geometry. You know, the rectangles on the right, the windows on the right, the the big rectangle, and then the kind of grid thing in front of it. And, you know, the curve to it makes it even more interesting. It's It's a very interesting architectural shot. And the lines, you know, you're not trying to get straight lines and straight horizons. And you've got, you know, a a lot of angles in terms of those windows going off to the right. Uh, Very, very cool. Very interesting. And the fact that you shot it with film is a big bonus. I need, I was just thinking today, I've got to get out. I have a project I'm going to be doing. So what you saw from shooting this Point Lobos, I've, I've photographed there many times. And Edward Weston, who I really admire his work, and we have videos about Edward. That was his backyard, literally. Lived a mile away. I'm going to be photographing there. I'm going to take a, about the next year to photograph there and a couple of other places. And I was just thinking, I really need to do that in film. I'm, I'm actually going to bring two cameras. I'll bring my Hasselblad for film and a digital, so I have them both. But anyway, that's a side note, and that's probably when I do this series of me out shooting is going to be photographing these locations, because they're pretty amazing. Anyway, good job on the film, good job on um, geometry there. It really works. All right. Uh, This one's from Mache. And uh, this is kind of about a series of photos. So this is from my holiday travel, a little ship trip uh, on the port of uh, that city to the peninsula where there was fighting uh, in World War II. Small series of photos. What do you think? So here's a series of photos that they took on the ship ride. Let me move me out of the way here. Okay, so go back. Go back to the first one there. Now, now we can see the whole thing. And there we go. I love the reflections. 
-hmm. and the frames within frames there's a lot of frames going on here that's a cool image just by itself because we're getting yeah behind him him his own posture you know <laughs> and then yeah that one's another you know more frames within frames and then was there one more yeah interesting no it's a cool series it tells us a little story about this guy piloting a ship the first one to me is the strongest let's go back to that one again i you know the other ones definitely work but um that one and the next one i feel are the most yeah but i almost feel like you know i get it they work together as a series because that on its own without seeing the first one you know those two kind of work together yeah if you kind of go back and forth it's like it's like a little movie you know you're seeing a little movie because we're going you know from out here we're going a little closer and yep now we're in a medium shot now we go to close up yeah you've done a, you've done what you, what you do in shooting movies you know we always do this see the big shot a medium and then close-ups and that's really the three shots you have in a movie and over any film just look at any film and you'll see those three shots over and over again big wide you know shot establishing the scene close up which is or medium rather which is usually the person from waist up and then clo and then uh, then close ups so me go wide medium close up so there's your medium shot now there's the close ups you know and then even more of a close up on the other one so you you've got a very cinematic series there which works really well and that that works with still photography brilliantly too you know it's the way our eye generally looks at things you know you walk into a, a space what do you do you take kind of a wide view first right and then you get sort of interested maybe there's a person there you kind of focus on them then you maybe start looking at little details and so you get really close and that, that is how your eye works. That's why that advice that I gave in my little video clip of don't put the camera to your face because you're immediately closing down that first look. And you're going to miss things. So take a wide look. Your camera is very narrow. I don't care what lens you have a fish eye on it. It still collapses your space and your view. Your view only take the camera out once you've done that movie directors do the same thing or or cinematographers they got to look around and go what do we have to work with here you know my son who was on a working at a company where annie Leibowitz came in to do a shoot said she didn't cap she walked around the environment for 20 minutes before she even pulled a camera out just looking Oh, that could be cool. Oh, that's a cool set right over there. Look at looking at the people as well. It's a really important thing to remember as photographers. First and foremost, we we are people. <laughs> and we have our own vision. We have our own built-in amazing optical system of looking at things and not only can you look at it, but then you can change it around your own mind. And that's what visualization is all about. And the camera is this very small part of that whole process, believe it or not. As much as most people, you know, on the Internet would like you to believe that it's all there is to it. It's no more, you know, if I were a chef and I was going to sell you this very fancy knife and tell you this $200, $2,500 knife is going to make you an excellent cook. I mean, a lot of people go out and buy it and they still wouldn't be able to make anything better than if they had a $2 knife. It doesn't, the knife is a tool that doesn't do anything until you, as the artist, put it to work. I'm digressing here, but it, you just brought up something. Okay. I'm glad to hear that, Saba. I do too. I, I, I love this. My favorite show is doing these critiques with you guys. All right, we got time for a couple more, Jared. Who yeah, else? Yeah, I think we got, we got two more that we'll get to. So okay. this one 
This is from Julian, who is currently in Myanmar, where there are protests against uh, the military coup that happened there recently. Oh. Um, the caption for this, a telling moment in the streets of downtown Yangon. You know, that that uh, arm gesture is what makes this a really powerful image. And we're uh, you've done a lot of a lot of things right with this image. So the light is striking your subject. The white shirt just almost like brings your eye right there to his face. But then the the fist raised gives it that you know talk about a mood line of emotion. You know it's just like pure emotion mirrored in his face. And then the people behind him are there, but they're they're like you know, in the shade. Now, I don't know if that was done completely in the camera or you did a little post work on that, but I'm guessing not. I mean, you just really capture that at the right moment with the, with the light on the main subject there. And then using a shallow depth of field really helped because, you know, the background just fades off. So that's a brilliant image. Well done. Just fantastic. All right, and then for our final image, this is from Frederick, okay. and uh, this was taken. Uh, this is a street barber in uh, in India. Yeah, Frederick, that's awesome. Yeah, look at the frame within a frame, and literally, <laughs> I mean, that's a brilliant use of of the mirroring, because. We can't see much of the guy from the behind, behind his head. I don't see any, you know, expression or anything. But, but looking at him, in the mirror, very powerful. And then the, you know, the people behind him and the colors. It's, it's just awesome. That is, you guys are inspiring me to go out and shoot some of these frames within frames. I love this. This is a really cool thing. So good one, great one to end on because that's a powerful image and and um, we've got so many things working together to tell this story. And remember, that's when a photograph really comes together is when you're telling that story with your camera. And you've told a story to us right here in one frame. Also, what I just said, right? Remember, we have the wide view, medium, close up. You've, you've actually got all three in this image. You got the wide outside frame, the medium shot in the, in, you know, here. And then even these objects are like little close ups of the barber, yeah. In all in one image. Well done. Okay. Well, I hope these are helping you guys. I certainly love it. And, um, we're going to roll out, as I said, we're going to roll out some new series here. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun this spring. Okay, so yep. Jared, who's going to be the winner? All right, so our winner for this week, I've done the random number generator, and okay. our winner is Chad Tobin. So congratulations, wow. Chad. I'll be reaching out to you, and uh, we'll get you hooked up with a uh, free month of AYP+. Plus. And we'll see you join us next week on Tuesday. And we'll, you'll be part of our AYP Plus community. You can see some of my past shows and classes and that sort of thing and get to meet the other folks, some of whom are in here with us, and uh, like Amy and Jared and uh, who else we got in there. Anyway. Uh, and several yeah. others. You bet. Anyway be great to see you over there. I want to hear a little, I'd love to hear more about this image. I love this image and I'd love to see the rest of your, your work there. Okay, you guys, well, this is awesome. So, uh, rounding things up here. Um, a lot of new stuff coming out of AYP. Stay tuned, take advantage of our sale. You know, it helped me help you because, uh, it helps us to have you guys have our stuff you know it helps pay for these shows that we're doing and it, it's it's getting you educated which is helping you and it helps 
it just helps all around. So please take advantage of that. Jared will be sending out, uh, I don't know that we even have the link ready for the discount, but we'll be sending that out. So if you guys aren't on our newsletter list, how can they s sign up, Jared, if they haven't already? You can sign up. He's going to do it right there. I'll put it in the link. I'll put a link out here for you guys to sign up with for our newsletter. So you guys are doing so well. I love seeing your work. Keep photographing. Keep your you know, vision out there. Keep creating because that is the antidote for any negativity. It really, really is. And, um, you know... Don't forget to, if you haven't already done so by this time, subscribe and enable the bell, share, like, tell your friends about this because we, we need a lot more people involved in this, right? And say it with me. Don't forget to remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Love you guys. Take care and we'll see you again really soon. Super great having you with us.